Hi, I'm Annie of ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie. Thank you so much for joining us for week number 34 of Live with Annie. Can you believe it's already the end of August? This month is just plain old evaporated. I had a delightful visit with my daughter and her family in Montana last week. We picked huckleberries and made huckleberry ice cream and hand pies. We devoured tomatoes and sweet corn fresh from their garden, and we enjoyed soaking our feet in the wash tub on the hot days. My grandson and I had lots of fun playing with Play-Doh, reading books, and making chocolate muffins, his favorite, while his mom and dad stayed busy with their wedding venue, Rugged Horizon. They had three weddings and several Airbnb guests while I was there, so things were hopping. I hope you enjoyed last week's pre-recorded presentation in which we showcased projects for back to school. We covered a variety of small, easy to make projects, perfect for students returning to class. If you missed it or want to watch it again, remember that all of the episodes of Live with Annie are available online. You can watch them on our Facebook page, on our YouTube channel, or by going to byannie.com slash live, L-I-V-E. That's probably the easiest way as you'll find the current episode there as well as a drop-down menu for past episodes. You'll even find a chat function. We'll put up the link to make it easy for you to find. To thank everyone for joining us last week, our prize was a kit to make a small Zip It Up case. The kit included the pattern and all the supplies, including fabric, to make the case. The lucky winner was Norma Kaufman. Norma um, has returned our message. We were a little bit late getting it to her, but she sent us her email, and we'll have that on its way to her soon. And we can't wait to see the Zip It Up case that you make, Norma. Before we start on today's topic, I'd like to share a few Biani updates. First, our shipment of zippers that was stuck at the airport in LA was finally found and cleared by customs. The zippers arrived here late last week and we have begun the process of assembling and packaging them. We're working hard to fill all our back orders, so please be patient and know that we will get your orders to you just as quickly as we can. Unfortunately, our supply chain issues continue. For instance, we learned yesterday that our big shipment of mesh, which was loaded on a ship and cleared for delivery on July 5th, is now delayed until September. That means it probably won't arrive here until November. We are already out of a couple of colors of mesh and expect more outages soon. Thankfully, we have mesh in 14 colors, and I often find that using a color different from the obvious choice works best. Our program next week is going to be about color, and I'll think you'll, I think you'll enjoy seeing how we audition colors of mesh for our projects. We ask you to continue to be flexible with us as we navigate through this unexpected delay. Finally, if you have emailed us in the past month and not received a reply, please know that we are not purposely ignoring you. With all the transitions in our system and personnel since about the end of July, a newly appointed email handler marked a spam email as spam and inadvertently sent all inquiries that were submitted through our webpage to our spam folder. With everything going on and because he was new to the process, he didn't realize that we weren't receiving the usual number of emails, so we didn't discover the problem until late last week when multiple customers indicated via separate channels that they'd not received responses to emails. We are working really hard to catch up on the over 500 backlogged emails, but it's a slow process. For instance, I've been assigned emails that pertain to patterns and videos. I spent all afternoon yesterday and got through 20 emails. So please be patient with us as we try to clear up this backlog and get back on track. Needless to say, we are all looking forward to the day when all of this is behind us and things are humming along like they should at Biani. It's the last week of the month, so our focus today will be on answering questions that have come in over the past weeks 
and sharing tips, tricks, and techniques. We're going to start with some tips for installing the zippers in our pattern Project Bags 2.0. All my stuff here. So this pattern includes instructions for sturdy bags in four different sizes. Small, medium, large, and jumbo. Each bag features a sturdy quilted base, a handle for carrying it, and a zippered front with a see-through window and a border at the bottom. A zipper at the top of the vinyl window has fabric strips on both the top and the bottom. These strips add interest and they also make assembly easier. When we updated this pattern to a 2.0 version, we made a number of changes, including adding interfacing and aligning to all of the borders. This ensures that the bag looks as nice on the inside as on the outside and it avoids any loose threads on the inside catching on contents. Since the 2.0 pattern was introduced, however, we've had some questions about makers about attaching the zippers and adding the lining on the top zipper strip. What I've discovered is that people are trying to make that step much harder than it is. So let's run through it quickly now. Move these out of the way and get out some samples here. So again, each bag has a quilted base and that's called the bag body. On top of that, we attach the bag front. And this is composed of the zippered vinyl window, borders on that and a border on the bottom. So the bag front is made by first attaching, let me grab these samples here by first attaching the border, which is either pieced or plain, to the vinyl window. Then zipper B, which is the strip that is attached to the bottom of, zipper, of the zipper, is attached to the vinyl window. Both of these steps are made by sandwiching the vinyl between two layers of fabric, sewing them together, and then top stitching through the layers. So we've got our border attached to the vinyl window, and then we've got zipper strip B, which is the bottom zipper strip attached to the vinyl. And then, and that's going to look like this when it's done. Our next step then will be attached to attach a zipper to zipper strip A, attach it to that, and once that done is done, we've got our bag front made. Okay, so the part that is really confusing people is the step of attaching the zipper between these two strips, zipper strip A and zipper strip B. So let's talk about that. Our original thought when we did this was that we would try to attach the zip strips to the zipper exactly in the same way as we attached the border, by sandwiching the zipper between those two strips, stitching them together, and then top stitching through the layers. However, since zipper strip B is already attached to the vinyl window, there's no way that you can attach it to the zipper using the sandwiching method. And since we felt that it would be best to use the same technique for both sides of the zipper strip, we decided to use our most commonly used method of zipper installation to attach the zipper. However, as I said earlier, we wanted to avoid either interfacing or the wrong side of the fabric showing on the inside as was done on the original pattern. So this is how the original pattern looked. You had just a single layer of fabric sewn to each side of a zipper. The wrong side showed, and we just thought it needed some interfacing, and we thought since everything else is lined, it would be nice to line that too. So here's, uh, the first step is the one that is seeming to cause the confusion. And what it says is attach the zipper strip A lining to zipper strip A. So zipper strip A has some interfacing on it. Zipper strip A lining is cut the same size, but it doesn't have interfacing. So it says attach zipper strip A lining to zipper strip A. With wrong sides together, position zipper strip A on top of the zipper strip A lining, aligning all the edges. Stitch together along the long bottom edge only, sewing an eighth of an inch from the edge. 
if you just read that and do it, it's simple. But, it's, but I think because people were doing sandwiching here, they think that they're going to be sandwiching on this part, and so that's where they get confused. The only purpose of this step is to add that lining on there and prevent the wrong or the interface side of the fabric showing on the inside. So all you have to do is put those two pieces together, position them so that their edges are aligned, and then sew along the long bottom edge. So again, zipper strip A is the one with the interfacing. Zipper strip A lining doesn't have any interfacing. All right, now you may be wondering why we're only going to stitch along the long bottom edge. And the reason for that is we discovered as we were making it that if we sewed all the way around the fabric as we attached it to the zipper and finger pressed it to um, turn it out of the way, we would get some wrinkles in it. So again, you're going to, you don't want this line of stitching to show, so you're going to sew an eighth of an inch from the edge and again just along the bottom edge. If you've got a fabric that is directional, um, finding the bottom edge is easy, like this one has frogs on it, so I did the bottom edge. If your fabric isn't directional at all, just pick one and designate it as, it's, as the bottom. So once that's done, then you're going to attach the zipper just like you do in the majority of Biani projects. So you're going to position your zipper with its right side up and the zipper slide over on the left. You're going to take your zipper strip and you want to make sure that you have the side with the interfacing on the bottom because that's the right side and we're putting right sides together. You're going to align your um, fabric so that your zipper overhangs each end and you also want the long edge of your zipper to overhang by about an eighth of an inch on here. And then you're going to sew this together with a generous quarter inch seam. So it's going to look like this. Once that's done, you will finger press the zipper tape over onto the lining side of the strip. And again, because we don't have it sewn along this edge, it's going to be really easy to do that without getting wrinkles in it. You're going to finger press that down and you're going to, from the back side, stitch along the very edge of the zipper to hold it in place. So when you're done, it's going to look like this. So we've got our zipper attached to zipper strip A. Then you're going to do the very same method to attach the zipper to zipper strip B, just making sure that you align the edges of the zipper strips together. And again, you want that little bit of zipper tape to extend at the top. You'll sew along there, and that's it. Your zipper will be installed. So in April, we did update the pattern instructions to add an extra line to that first step. And what it says is, note, the purpose of this step is to prevent the wrong sides of fabric showing on the inside. And sewing along only the bottom edge helps to keep each piece straight and flat once the zipper is installed. So that correction has been posted to our website. If you've got an older pattern, be sure to check that corrections page before you begin sewing. Um, if you've got a newer pattern that has those instructions, that's just a short little explanation of how that works. So I hope that's helpful to you. Those project bags are really helpful and you're going to see some of the ways that I use them as we proceed through um, today's segment. So if you're just joining us today, our topic is tips, tricks, and techniques, and we just covered some tips for installing zippers in our Project Bags 2.0 pattern. Let's move on now to some great tips that came from Karen S. She recently shared a great idea for reusing the small plastic containers that hold the Biani bag hardware. I'm going to dig out some examples here of, of um, some suggestions. Karen said, I was making multiple versions of travel essentials and found that I could save the small labels for each piece in one of the plastic containers. That way I could reuse the labels without having to copy the sheet again and cut it apart. That is a great idea and one I hadn't thought of. I particularly love these containers and I've used these handy little cases in so many ways. So this one I'm using to hold my Biani leather labels. I've got needles and pins, sewing machine feet, buttons. You could use them for snaps, embroidery thread. 
I even took one and made a bug hotel for my grandson in Montana. I lined it with two little pieces of soft and stable and used it to cushion a millipede and scorpion, both of which are dead, were dead, which I sent to him. He loves bugs and he thought that was really cool. Um, once you get all your stuff into the cases, then you're going to need a way to hold them. And I've got several options of those to show you. So pack it in, which is our pattern for packing cubes, is a perfect way to hold the cases. And I will try and turn this up without dumping them all so that you can see. But this is the small version, and I've got 26 cases in here. So it's enough for each of our colors of leather labels and a lot of sets of hardware or other supplies. Pack it in comes in three sizes, and if you made the whole set, you would be able to store over 200 cases. So again, the small one holds 26 cases. This is the medium one, I put them in the very same way, sideways like this, and I was able to get 50 cases in. And in the large one, because it's a little bit taller, you can store them upright, and I got 128 cases in the large one. So the really nice thing about these cases is that they're clear, so you can easily see what's inside them, or you can use a Sharpie marker to label any side of the case. So that is pack it in, at which, you know, I use it a lot when I'm traveling, and it's great for all my clothes and stuff, but if you want to use it for sewing supplies, it's really nice for that as well. All right, I also use these handy little cases to organize the snap-in letters that go with my letter board. Um, it's really easy to spell out a special quote or greeting when you've got everything organized alphabetically. So I put those in this little all aboard case, and it's really, um, I labeled each one of them, and um, that makes it easy to see. So my grandson really loves doing these with me. It's a really fun way to work on spelling with him. Um, he enjoys finding the letters that he needs to spell a word and then add on, adding them to the board. And this little medium-sized one is the perfect size to hold all the letters, and then I could put the numbers up here in the pocket at the top. So that pattern all aboard comes in three sizes. I didn't try um, putting cases in the small or the large, but as you can see, you could probably get a lot of those in those as well. Move these out of the way before I knock them off. And let me show you this. Here's another way to um, organize and store these containers. So this is our pattern called Bling It On, um, which was designed originally as a way to store and carry your jewelry, but it's also great for sewing supplies. It's got lots of pockets on each side. This side is made with straps for hanging necklaces, but the pattern includes a version um, that's perfect for sewing supplies too with an extra pocket here. The really nice thing about this pattern is that it um, zips open on this side so that you can access the inside and it's a great place to store big things like rulers. But by customizing this case, um, you can get lots of, of, um, of these uh, hardware containers in here. So on this one, I stored them upright and I got eight in each row. By placing them horizontally in the shorter pockets, I could get four in here. If I skipped this division right here, I could easily get a fifth in there. So this is a really great way to store and organize your buy any hardware collection or whatever else you want to store in these handy cases. And this is really easy to hang in a closet and um, you know it doesn't take up any room. You've got lots of space. It would be great for holding your zippers. Zipper pulls would go really perfectly in, in these little cases as well. And uh, Trevor just posted a note on here, Melinda has uh, the best idea yet, you could put M&Ms in them for portion control. That actually is a really good idea because it's so easy to eat the whole bag. And if you have just a handful in there, you'll stop, maybe, or go fill it up again. So that is ideas for using and storing our hardware cases. So in addition to the tips for storing the labels in the hardware containers, Karen also continued with another tip for working with labels. And that's what we want to talk about next. So.
So I'm going to wait on those. Um, she said, I will be starting on the switchback pattern, pattern soon, but my copy of the labels was a bit confusing. So I decided to color code the squares using markers. I colored the main fabric pieces with a line of one color, and I've kind of tried to do that on here. The lining fabrics with another color, and so on. So I used here pink for the main fabric, green for the lining fabric, blue for soft and stable, yellow for all the coordinating fabrics, and then for the quilted fabric, orange. So color coding would be especially helpful if you decided to switch up fabrics and cut things out differently than what the pattern directs. And it would be a really great way to avoid confusion as you're working. Here's another important reminder. Our copyright on each pattern gives you permission as the original purchaser of the pattern to make a copy of the labels. So be sure to make a copy of that page uh, so that you have a master copy in case you want to make the pattern again. So before cutting it up, make a copy. Here's another really helpful tip hint for working with the labels in our patterns. So one thing that I do when I'm um, cutting things out is I try to cut out all the labels that I need for a project. I have to figure out where I stuff those labels. And what I've done in the past is just got a heavy piece of plastic or a ruler or something and laid the labels out. So I've got all my main fabric pieces together, all my lining fabric pieces, all my um, quilted fabric pieces, and I've got my labels there so that as I work, they're cut out and ready to go, and I can stick them on. Well, I can't tell you how many times it's happened that I've got all my labels sitting there, and I pick up a piece of fabric and set it down, and that's what happens. All my labels blow away, and I have to start over reorganizing them again. So if that's happened to you, and I'm guessing many of you can relate, I think you will love this next tip that I want to share. And that is something that one of our in-house pattern um, testers came up with. And that's putting a perforating blade into a rotary cutter and using it to run along the lines between the copied sheet of labels. So I've actually already done this one, but let me just grab this one and, and show you how it works. So basically, and I don't even bother to use a ruler, I just, I just eyeball it because it really doesn't matter if these are straight and even. But as you can see, I can run that ruler on there, but it doesn't cut it. So I run it along all the lines, and then I just get a little, um, this is what, an 11 by, an 8 by 11 inch ruler, or mat, which fits on my clipboard. I clip my sheet of labels onto the clipboard, and then I can just tear the labels out as I go. So you can even do one right in the middle. If this is the one you need, you don't have to do the whole sheet at once. So if that's the one you're working on, you can tear that out and put it in. So it makes it really easy to keep them all in one place and, and tear them out as you need them. So these rotary cutters are called different things depending on the manufacturer. This is called a perforating blade. Um, I've seen them called other things as well, but they're designed for creating decorative borders in fleece and other fabrics. The ones we've say use say they're compatible with all um, 45 or most 45 degree rotary cutters. On this one, it actually came as a complete set. So on this one, the perforations are about a quarter of an inch apart, and it makes just really smooth, clean, perforated cuts on the paper, and according to the package, all types of fabric. I haven't actually tried it on fabric yet, but I really love it for paper. So hopefully that's a tip that you'll find helpful. And again, perforating blades aren't something that we carry, but your local quilt shop may have them, and if they don't, they certainly can order them for you. If you're just joining us today, we're talking about tips, tricks, and techniques. We've talked about how to install the zipper in Project Bags 2.0 and ways to recycle our hardware containers and use labels. Finally, here are some more tips for working with labels after I have a drink of water. Or a drink of Coke. All right. I'm going to clean up a little bit of my mess so that I have room here on the table. Take 
these out. So because we often have more than one person involved in cutting and sewing, we have developed some general ground rules to help make things more clear and save time. We are all about efficiency. And the more time you save in preparing a project, the quicker and easier it's going to be to assemble that project. I happen to have all the pieces cut out to make in a place for everything 2.0. So I'm going to use them to show you a few of our labeling rules. So first, one thing that we do, and I need to figure out which bag, I think this is the bag that I want to dig out first. So one of our first rules is that we attach the label to the right side of the fabric. If it's a quilted fabric, the label is attached to the side that's going to be on the exterior. This is usually the main fabric, but sometimes we use the lining fabric on the exterior of the bag. So by attaching the label to that side of the piece, we can make it clear to the model maker how she's supposed to position the pieces. We also have the general rule of attaching the label at the top left of the piece. That way it's really clear to see which part of the fabric should be at the top. On a big print like this it's easy to see but sometimes it's not and it just saves time and thinking. There is one exception that we make to these rules and I'm going to have to open this bag to show you that one. And that's, um, show, or I can show you that with our zipper strips. So many of our patterns are designed to have two zipper strips, and we're going to attach a zipper between those. If we're using a fabric that has a really distinct motif, such as this one, we really like to cut that as one solid piece, which we cut in half, so that the design continues from one side of the strip to the other. To make it really quick and easy for the maker to know where to attach the zipper and not have to think about it or play with it and turn the pieces around at all, when we're cutting these out, we fold the pieces over so that the bottom strip is on the top one and the right sides are together, and we attach a wonder clip with the label on the side where the zipper is going to be attached. So that means that all the maker has to do when she's ready to attach the zipper to that is open it up along there, and she's going to know that her zipper needs to go right there. So she doesn't have to spend extra time and extra thinking trying to figure it out. And usually when you're cutting, that's when you're making decisions like that. So, you know, you may not get to that piece for a while. If you can make it easy for you when you get to it, to know what to do. That's just going to save you some time and effort. So I need to make sure I put this back so it makes sense to her when she makes this. So another way that you can save time is to consolidate all the pieces um, for one piece as you cut and prepare and then put those together in one place. So for example, um, these are the parts for the bag. And I've got everything that I need for the front of the bag here. So I've got the pocket that goes on the front of the bag, the border that goes on the pocket, the zipper that goes there, the interfacing, and the front of the bag. So everything, this I think is supposed to go here as well. Yeah, this is my border and my binding. So all of that goes together to make the front of the bag. Another tip. Um, we often use a variety of colors in a project. So as we make the decision about which colors are going to go where, it's really helpful to pin that zipper to the right piece where it's going to go. That's going to make it more clear to the maker, whether it's you or someone else. Again, especially if some time elapses between making the decision and making the pattern. Once I have all the pieces for my bag cut out and ready to go, I'm going to put them together in this project bag. So everything is set and ready to go there. So I've got my um, bag front and back, the pockets, the straps, the handles. I'm also going to put the page strap in there. That actually goes with the pocket pages. 
but because I make all the straps at once, it makes sense to put it in with these. So again, this is our um, extra large or jumbo, jumbo um, project bags, and as you can see, that holds everything perfectly. Then I'm going to take all the pieces for my pocket pages, which include the vinyl, the mesh, the fold over elastic, the, whoops, that needs to go in that one, all those, put those, and I'm going to put those in a separate bag. And I can tell you that a Style 1 pocket packer is perfect for that. So if you're going to a retreat or even at home sewing and you're do it getting all your cutting, having everything organized in one place makes it really easy when you're ready to work on your project. I better make sure I get all these pieces put back where they go. Here's one last tip for attaching labels. We make lots of models here at Biani, and my main model maker lives 100 miles away. So to avoid lots of trips back and forth, she usually comes in only once or twice a month. That means that every couple of weeks, I spend a day or two cutting and preparing projects for her. As I get everything together, I cut out and attach labels to all the pieces. When we started this process, I found that I was going through pins at an alarming rate. She'd try really hard to set them aside and return them, but that was always a hassle for both of us. So one day, as I was attaching our little laminated tags to projects, which you may have noticed on here, as we send out trunk shows, we always put a tag on the project to tell them what pattern it is. And we use a little tag gun to do that. And I have to, oh, I put it in here so it would be easy to access. So this is called a quilt basting gun. It's quick and easy to use. It's also safe and secure. And as I was putting those tags on, I realized that the gun would solve our disappearing pin problem too. So again, these lightweight little guns are designed for basting quilts, so there's a good chance you probably already have one. If not, again, ask at your local quilt shop. If they don't have them in stock, I'm sure they can order one for you. Here's what you need to know. This little gun has a really sharp needle, and it will go through several layers of fabric easily, even fabric quilted with soft and stable. The needle separates the threads but doesn't break them, just be careful not to poke yourself because it's really sharp and it hurts. And there's a cover that's attached so you don't lose it to go over the needle and make sure that as soon as you're done, you put that on there. So along with the um, gun comes a strip of fine plastic fasteners. And you just insert them into the opening at the top and then let's find something that we want to label assume that we're sticking a label on here. Take your label, you just push it through, and the trick on this is make sure that the tag gun is pressed really tight against the fabric before you press this little lever. And that's going to catch it and attach it, and then when you're making your project and you want to remove it, you just put your scissors underneath there and clip it off. If you find for some reason that these tags aren't catching, I have found that if I just pull down on the strip here so they're tight against the gun, that usually solves that problem. One thing else that we've noticed is they don't hold well in mesh, and they will catch on mesh. So if we're doing something with mesh, I will usually take the binding or the zipper that goes with that mesh pocket fold it over the mesh, and then put the label on both pieces at once because then that will hold it in place. So I hope that you've picked up a few tips to help you label your pieces, and we would really love to hear any tips that you might have developed on your own projects. Just share them in the comments section because I always love reading those, and I know everyone does too. Again, if you're just joining us, today we're sharing tips, tricks, and techniques. We've shared some really helpful tips for installing zippers, recycling our hardware cases, and using the labels that come with most of our patterns. We're going to close with one final question. Over the years, a number of customers have asked whether we have a private Facebook group for people who are making projects using our patterns. Unfortunately, there are only so many hours in the day, and managing a group like that is a huge project. So no, there is no official 
by any Facebook group. However, there is a wonderful Facebook group called By Annie Bag Makers that I would like to recommend. This group is not affiliated with ByAnnie.com at all. It was started by a lovely young mother, Randy Johnson, who wanted to connect with fellow By Annie enthusiasts. Randy's description of the group calls it a place to share tips and tricks for my making By Annie bags, showing off your own work is encouraged, asking questions is encouraged too. Please help each other and be kind. Randy says that she has had people join without ever having made a Biani bag before, and they now have over 9,000 members from 90 countries. I have only been a member for a short time, but I have been really impressed with the group. They share awesome projects made using Biani patterns and products, and there doesn't seem to be any of the drama that often comes with such groups. From what I have seen, they are very encouraging and supportive and really willing to share their knowledge. So if you are interested in connecting with other Biani bag makers, I would suggest that you check them out. So what you need to do is go to Facebook and search for Bi Annie Bag Makers. And note that each of those is a separate word, so there is a space between Bi and Annie. Trevor's going to put a link up uh, in the comment section so you can also click on that link. Once you've found the right page on Facebook, then click on the button that says join and you're going to be asked to answer a couple of questions about why you'd like to join the group. You'll submit your request, the administrator will review and approve it, and in my experience approval happens really quickly. Randy says that she has two young children so she's up at all hours. I have seen some really amazing bags made by members of the group and also picked up some really great tips too. So I want to say a special thank you to Randy for setting up the group and to all of the talented by any makers who have shared their projects and advice. We really, really appreciate you so much. All right, um, before we move on to announcements, um, Trevor's put a couple questions up here that we will ask. And the first one is, what is the purpose of letting the zipper overhang the fabric? And that is an excellent question and one that I definitely want to answer. So let me find my pieces here. So when we attach a zipper to, I'm just going to grab a piece of quilted fabric and we'll talk about it. So when we attach a zipper to a project, we put usually right sides together and we let the zipper hang out on each end so that we can avoid the stops. We move the stops. Let me clean some stuff off here so hopefully you can see what I'm doing a little more easily. So we're going to move these slides all the way to the end and let those hang off on the end because as you can see, wherever your slides are, you've got a bulge in your zipper tape and it's going to be hard to get a nice straight seam if you've got that. So let your zipper hang off on either end, and then you also want your zipper to overhang here about an eighth of the inch. The reason for this is that after you, hang on, okay. After you sew your zipper in place, you are going to finger press this over against your fabric and stitch along the very edge of the zipper tape. The purpose of that is to enclose all the raw edges that are under there and also to produce your top stitching on the other side. If you don't let your zipper, zipper overhang your fabric a little bit, it's going to be much harder because you're going to have raw edges hanging out. So by letting your zipper tape extend just that little bit, it's much easier for all your raw edges to be hidden when you do that. So I hope that makes sense. If you need help again with zippers, don't forget that we've got some excellent zipper tutorials at our website. Uh, one of the best is available in the public videos section of your digital library at our website. You just go down to the very bottom and there are several videos there, but it, it will walk you through all of the steps to install zippers with that method. So that is the method that we use most often 
on our patterns and is a great one to learn. All right, let's move on now to our featured local quilt shop of the week. Again, one of our very favorite events each year is our local quilt shop contest, and we host it every February. The contest encourages sewists to vote for their favorite quilt shop and to share a little bit about what makes that shop special. So to continue the fun and support of these businesses, each week we highlight a store and some of the voter submissions during our Live with Annie. This week we are featuring the final yard in Winchester, Virginia. Earlier this summer, I had the pleasure of speaking with Tammy, who is the owner of the final yard. We were finalizing plans for the trunk show that we were sending to her, and she told me a bit about all the fun events that she had planned during the time the trunk show would be in her store. Among other activities, she was planning a two-day final yard quilt fair, complete with a hot dog stand, games, make and takes, demos, and more. It sounded like so much fun, and I'm sure it was a great success. Not surprisingly, the final yard has had many wonderful stories and reviews submitted during the local quilt shop contest this year. Tammy and the creatives at the final yard have developed quite the atmosphere for their store, whether you're a brick and mortar location or following along for their Facebook live shows. The majority of viewers specifically mentioned how much they learn in each broadcast of her Facebook Live. Melissa said, the final yard always has unique products and is always able to demonstrate them. They constantly inspire me to try new quilting techniques. Learning new techniques and finding out about unique products is always such fun and we are so very grateful to our local quilt shops who continue to inspire and educate us. All right, I just realized I forgot to grab everything for the giveaway, but that's okay. We can talk through it and, um, and tell you what we're going to do. So we want to again say thank you to everyone who joined us today. We know that there are lots of ways you can spend your time, so we really appreciate that you take the time to join us each week. So to say thank you, we have a really fun giveaway today. Um, since we talked about project bags and kind of featured those, we are going to give away a kit to make a set of project bags. So it will include the Project Bags 2.0 pattern, a half yard package of soft and stable, two 30 inch double slide zippers, and a 16 by 54 inch package of our new Biannis Premium Clear Vinyl. So that's enough soft and stable zippers and vinyl to make all four sizes of the project bags that are in the pattern. As always, note that soft and stable comes in black or white, and 30-inch zippers come in 48 fabulous colors, although, as you're probably aware, we are out of stock on a number of them, so you might have to be a little bit uh, careful on what you choose. But if you have a preference for colors, let Trevor know when he reaches out to let you know that you won. And here's what you need to do to win. And remember, you need to do this on Facebook. It doesn't work on YouTube. So first of all, leave a comment in the comment section. Tell us something you learned in today's presentation. Uh, if you found other uses for Biani's hardware cases, please share those with us. How do you store your hardware um, and zippers and small items like that? Which Biani pattern shown today would you like to make next? Who are you going to make it for? And of course, if you have any other special tips or ideas for new patterns, we always love seeing those as well. Second thing that we ask you to do is tag a friend. We really want to spread the word about our weekly Facebook Lives, so please share with someone who you think would enjoy these presentations. And to ta tag someone, all you need to do is type the at symbol, followed by their Facebook name. Um, a picture will pop up so you can make sure that you've got the right person. If so, click on it, add your comment, and submit it. We are going to pick winners from comments made by Midnight Mountain Time tonight, so you have a little over nine more hours to watch and comment. And finally, remember to check your Facebook messages. Trevor will notify our winner and ask you to email your shipping address. And again, if you can let him know then which color of soft and stable and zippers you prefer. So thank you again to everyone who joined us today. We are going to be back next week at 2 p.m. Mountain Time with another fun episode of Live with Annie. Our topic will be colorful coordinates, and we will be talking about choosing fabrics, zippers, mesh, fold-over elastic, thread, and more. 
you won't want to miss it. So until then, happy stitching. <laughs>